So, as I promised, we have a couple of pre presentations. Lucas is in the dark. <laughs> Otherwise, we have Rico right now. Uh, Rico had an internship this past summer, and uh, so did the other two. I thought that it's beneficial for you to know, one, how do you find one, two, what happens there while you're an intern, and three, the words of wisdom. Please, go ahead. Hi, so my name is Rico Berto. I um, interned this summer at Florence Livermore National Lab. Um, the way I got the internship was actually in a uh, colloquium. There was a speaker, her name was Kay Isaacs, and she just left uh, Lawrence Livermore to go uh, start a, mat a doctorate's program over at Arizona State. After the presentation, I came to talk to her, and she um, told me that there'd be a professor coming in, named, uh, the name is Dr. Barry Roundtree, who was going to be teaching a course here, and um, I already had signed up for the course, so it was just destiny, I guess. Um, <laughs> So after I took the course, um, I connected with Dr. Barry Roundtree and uh, asked if there was any way that I could do some more work, because it was, um, we were in a class about supercomputing practicum, so we explored the realm of supercomputing and as well as parallel computing and performance optimizations. And Well, that was something that really, really like stood out to me and something I really, really liked to do. So after talking to Dr. Barry Roundtree, I was able to get the internship. Um, as soon as he told me to go apply, the application process is supposed to take anywhere from a week to two weeks. I finished it with a couple hours. This is how much I wanted it. Um, and once I got the internship offer, I accepted it. And mainly what I was supposed to be doing at Lawrence Livermore was to be exploring the optimization of both unikernels and lightweight kernels on a specific coprocessor from Intel called the um, Knight's Corner. And what that means is a co or what a coprocessor means is that the coprocessor is kind of like it looks like a graphics card with a GPU, a really big chip that pairs up with a CPU <coughs> chip that is able to send a bunch of work, in, in this case a bunch of parallel calculations, over to the coprocessor and the coprocessor does all the calculations instead of having the CPU do the calculations. The reason we want the coprocessor to do the calculations instead of the main CPU is that the coprocessor co has way more cores compared to the CPU. And what I was able to do along with my co-intern, who was from Clemson University, his name was uh, Jamar, we were able to actually get a kernel to boot into the um, coprocessor, um, the coprocessor, and instead of actually having to boot up into an operating system and then run the command, we were able to get the coprocessor to actually do calculations without any human interaction. So instead of having a, um, to load the operating system, wait for that overhead, we went in and created a, what we like to call a dummy operating system that instead of booting into um, all the other necessary component or unnecessary components like sensors and uh, other parts of the coprocessor that we're not trying to use, we specifically only targeted um, and gave power to the cores that we wanted. Very specific cores that were closer to the data memory controller so that instead of having to wait for other cores to uh, boot up and then uh, obtain memory from the memory controller, we only booted the ones that were right next to the uh, memory controller so that way we only used the fastest cores. Um, aside from that, that was the main work part, but there was also a really um, interesting social aspect to actually being at the lab. It felt more like a college than it was like a business in the sense that there were so many PhD students, there were so many students from all over the world, from very prestigious universities, from local universities, that were all coming together and talking about you know their uh, specific interests. I was a little scared going in because I didn't think I was actually going to be able to hang with like all these uh, prestigious students from all these prestigious, prestigious universities, but I was actually able to hold my own and. I learned that a lot of people, even though they're getting their PhDs or they're getting their masters, are actually afraid of hardware. And um, being that I took the class from Dr. Revoir 351, I wasn't afraid of hardware at all. I was actually the one who helped most of the students in the um, in my uh, sec uh, area to debug their issues with hardware. Like we had very special um, workbench stations that had proprietary Intel chips and other information or other um, components that were not released to the public. So it was hard for them to actually debug and work with, but for me, because I understood how the hardware worked and I wasn't afraid to unplug it, plug it back in and do other things like that, we were actually able to get everything up and running. So I was mainly debugging a lot of the issues and compilation issues that the other students had, as well as developing the kernel. 
Um, I was also able to talk to Intel. A lot of uh, people from Intel actually got very interested in the project that JMR and I were working on, and they wanted to come and talk to us because they saw a potential opportunity to be to actually um, improve their hardware. And I was also able to collaborate with uh, one of these students. Her name was Stephanie Labasan, who actually worked on a uh, the next generation of processors, which haven't been released yet. Um, so that was very, very. Uh, very inspiring to know that I was actually working with people who are gonna, uh, who were part of the, the group that is gonna release the next processors, the next Intel chip processors. Um, another thing that I was actually able to do at the lab was I was able to take courses um, and meet with other people who were also in the leading or the bleeding edge of the field, and I learned a lot through um, both the staff and the students um, at the lab, and it was just very. It wasn't hectic in the sense that I had to get a final project out. We were just doing it for the research and implementation. Is it possible? Is it not possible? And luckily for us, we were actually able to get something running. Of course, we still want to keep working on it, and I hope to go back in the spring, or that's the plan is to go back in the spring and keep implementing more on, the, uh, on my project. Um, there are certain aspects of the project I can't talk about just because it's uh, classified information. Um, but yeah, that was mainly what I did. Um, any word, the words of wisdom I would give to someone, to all of you actually, who haven't had an internship is just go out and do it. Just go out and apply. It doesn't matter if you have to apply to a hundred different places or just one place like I did. Just go out and do it. This is the only time of your life that you actually have the time to go and just go to any place in the world and um, take an internship. You know, it's not, it's, there's nothing bad with not graduating with any internship experience. Um, but of course, there's so many more benefits to actually doing so. Those are my words. Any questions? Questions. How important was it for you to be like social? Because I know you're talking about like all the things you've learned, but it also sounds like you were talking to people to get to the place. So being social and being approachable and actually being able to communicate your thoughts clearly was really big. I guess that's why a lot of people uh, were a, were kind of relying on me to be able to relay information to both <coughs> our mentors and the uh, people at Intel. So. Inadvertently, I kind of also became the person to be able to talk to other people if they weren't able to convey their message across. Your questions? Thank you. Thank you. so you kind of get practiced. Uh, thank you so much for accepting this. Uh, go for it. So uh, I was an intern at Amazon over the summer last year, this year, um, and it was a great experience. Um, the way that I actually got the internship was uh, I applied to well over 50 different places everywhere. So um, my words of advice would be just apply everywhere. Um, I made a LinkedIn account. That was the first thing I did about freshman, sophomore year. And then there's actually uh, a way for you to upload your resume. And you can apply for many flip places just with a single one click. And it just sends your resume over there. And they get it. And they let you know whether they like you or not. So I did this for everywhere. Uh, not only the San Francisco area, Seattle area, New York, Texas, everywhere. Um, just in hopes to hear back from somewhere. And I managed to hear back from Amazon. And that was the only place that contacted me, um, which is a little bit sad, but it was fine. Um, so the interview process was two rounds. It was first a coding exam, which was uh, seven questions, 21 minutes, uh, in an online environment, and you basically just answered them as fast as you can. And I only got six out of the seven. I thought I wouldn't get a call back, but within 24 hours, they wanted a phone interview. So um, they contacted me for that, and that was an hour-long process where they had you writing in a Google Doc and no compiler, no anything, any language you wanted, and they wanted me to write certain lines of code. Um, I wrote that, I thought I did bad, but once again, they contacted me and they made me an offer. And uh, so it was a 12 week long internship program, and uh, it started on a Wednesday, which I thought was interesting. But um, on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, they just introduced you to all of their tools. And working at a big company like that, 
it's like drinking from a fire hose. You have so much information that they really throw you in there. It's not that you're viewed as an intern, you are an employee. For those 12 weeks, you are given a project and they expect you to work just like every employee does. So um, while there are a lot of fun things with it, like uh, intern ping pong matches and things like that, uh, you really are considered an employee, which is nice, so I know what it will be like to go back um, in September, which I will be doing. Um, one of my favorite things about the internship was on your last day, your manager pulls you aside and tells you whether you got a full-time offer or not. Now, that is nice in some sense because you know whether you will have a job or not, but on the other sense, it puts a lot of stress on you, and you really want to work your hardest during those 12 weeks. But um, what I thought it was a great time. Um, the interesting thing, what I thought was my first, so it was a 12-week program, my first six weeks didn't involve writing a single line of code. It was all first getting acclimated to all of the environments, and then um, actually figuring out and reading through thousands of lines of code that my team had written and figuring out where my modifications need to go and writing and documenting all of my design decisions. And then I had a design meeting with my entire team and they said, okay, you know, some things are good, some things are bad, this is what you should change. But and up until that point, I hadn't written a single line of code, which was interesting. I thought everybody writes code on their first day. Um, but that actually ended up helping a lot because the next six weeks were just plugging in everything that I had designed before and making the proper adjustments. And uh, this is pretty standard, at least at Amazon, because you need to cover yourself with somebody else comes and looks at your code and you had moved to a different team and they say, well, this was a very stupid design decision. You need to have something in place that says, well, I did this because of X, Y, and Z. So um, that was very interesting, different method since here we kind of just start programming right away. We get an assignment, we look at the requirements and start writing. Um, but what my team actually did, so I was on the e-commerce customer classification selection services systems. Big title, it doesn't really mean anything. Um, what we did was uh, scan the Amazon catalog and uh, we would do regular expression matching with items and descriptions. And basically, um, if the word firearm appeared in the description, we knew that this was an illegal item. We're not allowed to sell it on Amazon, so we have to get rid of it. And we would scan it several thousand times per day, and the data set is about 10 terabytes. So it's quite a bit of data, and we run through the entire thing in less than two minutes. So we have a giant cluster, several thousand machines, and that's something but I didn't have any experience prior with uh, distributed systems, but I had to write code that would run on thousands of machines at the same time, which is very interesting. And the only place you really get to experience these things is with large companies. Um, other companies don't have the ability to buy a thousand machines to just run these kinds of things on. So um, that's what my team actually did, and I implemented the priority queue so that when high priority jobs come in, it basically allocates a certain percentage of resources to the cluster, uh, to those jobs and that was very fun and I actually came up with two sets of equations which are um, currently being hopefully patented. I'm not really sure what's going on with that but I applied for patents. Um, so it's really cool because they have all these internal tools that you just submit an idea and if they like it all of their lawyers will take care of everything and you will get the patent. It will be in Amazon's name but you will be accredited with it as well. So that is really nice to add on to your resume and uh, yeah so there's a lot of things I can't talk about because I'm under an NDA agreement and um, yeah, but if anybody has any questions or wants to work at Amazon or I also was contacted by Google halfway through my internship, um, if anybody wants to work there, I can hopefully put you in touch with somebody. So um, yeah, my words of wisdom is apply everywhere. It, it doesn't matter, but worst case scenario, you don't hear back anything, that's fine. It's not like they're gonna remember your name for the next time that you apply or they don't talk to each other. And this is the only time in your life, just like Rigo said, that if you get a job application or you, you get a job in Texas, you can go move there. And five years from now, 10 years from now, you might not have that opportunity. So once you graduate, apply everywhere. I mean, all you juniors right now, you should be applying now. I didn't know that you have to apply that early for, inter uh, for internships, but it's generally December, January area because they get thousands of applications. They need to weave through all of them. The interview process is about halfway through next <laughs> semester, but you need to send your applications now and send them everywhere. Any questions? Questions for Lucas. Thank you.
me to do this. Please, go ahead. Um, so I did an internship at a small company in Napa. They do e-commerce for wineries. They're called Cultivate Systems. Um, the really cool thing about working at a small company is I kind of got to see every aspect of the company. Um, they had two software engineers and I was kind of like their assistant. So I would slowly get to do more advanced things throughout the internship and I would start off on small tasks and by the end of the internship they could sort of hand me bigger chunks of work and take it off their load. Um, so more specifically what the company does is for wineries when you go to their website um, if you click on the link that says like acquire wine or purchase wine you're actually leaving the winery's website and going to um, the company Cultivate Systems websites. And so one of the first things I did there was I took our templates and I made it match new clients' websites. So I went through, it was a lot of web design. I didn't really have any experience in web design. So I got really good at HTML, CSS, jQuery. Um, it was really cool because I couldn't actually touch the HTML. I just had to do style sheets and wrap everything. So I had to get pretty creative with making everything work. Um, I also, remodeled the websites and made them responsive so a lot of the older designs didn't fit on iPads or iPhones or anything like that so got a little experience with that and then on a day-to-day -day basis I would just go in if clients had requested customizations or any kind of changes to their websites they would send that to me um, it could involve the database if they wanted a new field added or something like that um, the company really their software was a big database that holded all their clients, all their information, all their um, you know addresses, what their position on the wait list, because a lot of the wines, they don't have enough supply for the demand, so you have to get on a wait list. So they also had algorithms for who got what allocations. So I got to see a little bit of everything, really. Um, I had one long, or actually had three long-term projects, but one that was kind of interesting was a security project, where um, there was a lookup table, and I had to go through a majority of the code and see what code did what and sort of wrapped that in some statements that when you look up in the table you could see based on what their security level is if they were allowed to access that because the clients not everyone should be able to go into the database and see whatever they wanted so um, when I started there they only had three levels of security and we implemented a user interface that was kind of like control panel and so you could turn on and off security levels for people really customize groups or if someone was just using something for some particular reason you can go in and give them access to just certain elements so I really enjoyed that project um, yeah I guess I didn't really talk about how I got the internship but <laughs> so I did do the same thing I applied to a lot of places just by submitting my resume online and I heard back from a lot of places like later just saying like oh sorry we already filled the position or I wouldn't hear back at all um, so I started just networking and talking to people I know saying I was looking for an internship and one of my coworkers actually knew someone who owned a software company so I got in touch with them sent them my resume had an interview I talked with three of the people there um, the co-founder the um, software engineer and a account executive and it wasn't really a technical interview, no real coding questions, but they just wanted to get a feel for why I wanted to do an internship. And um, the software engineer did talk to me about what I knew, what I had experience with to see if they thought I would be able to do the things they needed. Um, yeah, and words of wisdoms are, I think that everyone should do an internship. I wish after doing this that I would have done more, so I had an opportunity to do like a smaller company, a bigger company, because we're all in school to hopefully get a job that we like and enjoy and so it's good to see you know do I want to work in a smaller company or a bigger company and where do I feel comfortable so I feel like I got a really good feel for how it is to work there and have a better idea of what jobs I want to look for when I graduate. Questions? <coughs> Did you have a lot of experience going into it? Did I have um or related experience? It was the summer after my junior year. I had taken the databases class this year, so that helped me a lot. A lot of, I did a lot of <coughs> testing while I was there too, so making sure things that were put in the database go to the right place. So I had to do a lot of SQL statements for um, quality assurance testing. I didn't really know much with web design, which was a big part of it, so it was a good learning experience there. Um, I think they definitely gave me things in chunks so I could get better and better so they provided me the learning tools 
And, you know, as a computer science major, we're problem solvers, so we go to Google if we don't know how to do something and figure it out. So that was, you know, taught me how to face challenges I didn't know the answers to. Yes. Do you want to work in a small company or do you want to move on to a big one? Um, I definitely think I want to go to a big one. It's definitely good to know how that feels. It felt really secure. You know everyone that works there. It was a really, like, a family situation and... I did like that, but I would definitely want to get a little experience in a bigger place and just see how that goes for a while. That's why I, I wish I would have done the internship sooner so I got a little more different creation. <clears throat> yes? Just out of curiosity, what was the documentation like for the code that already existed for like, such a small company? Was there like an established uh, like case of documentation you guys had, or was it all just um, It depend on who did the work. So some people, <laughs> <laughs> you could tell. <laughs> You could tell they, there was a lot of code in some places, and in some places there was like no documentation at all. So when I was going through doing the security project and looking at all the code, some places are like, oh, this is really easy to see what this does. But some other places, I was like, took a while to figure out what is this actually doing here, and you know, how can I figure that out? And I did have a software engineer that was there I could go to and ask questions. Um, and two, one of the software engineers had been there since they opened. One came on a little later, and some had come and gone. So person wasn't there anymore, it was a little more challenging. Yeah. I just wanted to make a comment on the small company. Uh, I've never worked in a small company, but Amazon is relatively large. And um, it was definitely not the family feeling, but yeah. not that small. It was more, way more competitive. Yeah. And it's all a competition. Yeah, it was the complete opposite. That was really awesome. Everyone wanted to see you do well and wanted to help you learn. And that was really cool. And because it was smaller, I got, you know, like I said, to see the entire software kind of. And it was, even took a while to figure out what everything did because they were really data driven as far as analysis and business goes. So I didn't know all those aspects, but I got to, you know, see a little bit of everything. Other questions? Thank you for it. Okay. Do uh, you have any questions? I just wanted to point, point out that uh, the connection to Lawrence Livermore came through Dr. War, uh, who um, got us in touch with Dr. Roundtree, and like uh, Rico said, he taught the course for us, and then he became really an advocate for us, and a good number. Uh, Definitely a good number of our students went through internships there and then through graduate schools or they stayed there for full-time jobs. Uh, so our next event is to recognize the services that our uh, club officers provide to our students. I cannot overemphasize the importance of our clubs, the two clubs you have, CS Club and Wix. Uh, that, those, that's really, so we're a department. A department consists of students, like you know, the faculty and sports people, uh, uh, Roger, uh, Dina. The majority of what we do is the business of teaching. That's what we do, and support of that mission. And the club, what they provide is really the social aspect, if you will, or a, an environment where students can get to know who we are indirectly and what the department is about, what the opportunities are, things that they could learn from other students. Um, and of course, they uh, stage fun events for students to get involved in those events. A lot of times draw our alumni uh, back to campus. We really appreciate all the hard work they do. So we recognize uh, our club officers. And here is the CS Club. And Dr. Watts is going to give the awards. <coughs> OK. Um, first of all, I'd like to make a suggestion to the CS Club that you bring all three of our speakers today back in and have a workshop where people apply for internships and jobs. Just I've said some of the things that people said today, and I think it's really good hearing it come from students, too. Um, first award, Colin Franceschini, who is the Marketing and Public Relations Officer. There's Colin. Thank you 
so much. Tyler Gearing. Kevin Considine. Vice President Jonathan Thompson. <laughs> and of course, the President Jessica DiVincenzi. Thank you. Dr. DeWar for Rick's Absolutely. officers. recognize uh, the Wix members and officers. This has been a pretty exciting semester for women in tech at SSU with some new resources being given for that. And our officers have done a great job working with people in the Dean's office to provide opportunities to support our female students. So I want to recognize the officers. Um, first of all, Jessica DiVincenzi um, is the event coordinator. Sarah Mosley is the treasurer. And Brooke Borges is the president. Thank you, ladies. And it is my pleasure to present the Distinction Awards. We have one uh, uh, for fall graduates. As you know, Distinction Award has a number of different components. One is GPA component. The other one is your mastery of topics, the ability to pull different topics together. And then the third item is service to the department. And we are trying to work to provide more opportunities for you to uh, in the last category. Uh, of course, club officers uh, really do the, the department a lot of good service, and we really always appreciate them. So this time, the recipient of our Distinction Award is Mahesh Gautam. Semester. Do you feel it? <laughs> Do we have 4.15 this afternoon? How many of you? A few. That's fine. Tomorrow we have two courses and that's the end of it. I hope you enjoyed the semester. I know it's, these are hard days. <laughs> Projects, exams. There is an end to it. That's a good thing about it. Uh, so I I really want to get at least some feedback about those of you who are going to stay here, be here next semester, about our schedule. So what I know is that we had a number of students on our wait list, on wait lists for the upper division courses, the 400 <laughs> level courses, and we accommodated the majority of those. Okay? We still have a few on these lists, but we accommodated the majority of those. 470, of course, had long wait list, and that was all understood, and uh, we opened a second section. It, that second section is going to become active this afternoon sometime, okay? 470, it's going to become after the first section. Sometimes it's on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, probably sometime odd time, like 535 is when it starts, a three unit course, an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, so that's going to become available to you. We have uh, a long wait list on 340. 
uh, and we are opening a new section for that course on Tuesdays and Thursdays. No, not for that course, I beg your pardon, for another elective, which has the same prerequisite requirements as 340. In fact, actually, it has fewer. It has 20, 215 for prerequisite. And it meets on Tuesdays and Thursdays, 7 to 8.15. Okay? And so these are all kind of not exactly odd times for us because we have a lot of classes that meet in the afternoons and late afternoons. But that particular course at least gives uh, uh, the students who are on the wait list for 8 in the morning, class 3.40, an opportunity to kind of have fewer at least uh, 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 scheduling conflicts. Uh, We probably are going to stop there uh, next semester. We're going to next, as in, it's so amazing that once spring starts, just right at the beginning of February, February we start scheduling for fall 17. So it starts real early. So for fall 17, uh, we will provide and uh, open up more sections. Hopefully so that we don't have long wait lists, okay? We strategically try to open up sections in such a way that students can maneuver through our courses. Um, questions? <coughs> Concerns? Do I leave out anything? We're good. <laughs> <coughs> Um, Android, the, did I call it? I have to come up with a title. So it's an Android <laughs> development. Except I didn't call it Android development. I think yeah, it was Android framework. Uh, so Jeff Fisher, uh, you probably a lot of you know Jeff. Uh, he will teach uh, one section of 370. And he does teach Android, I know, in 370. But he's going to offer uh, this Android uh, course, uh, full-fledged, uh, semester long. Uh, I know that a lot of you guys like Android. We do iOS development for 70. So at least we've kind of for a long time, we've been more leaning towards Apple. And now here is kind of a level playing field. Questions? I really appreciate the fact that you guys are so always patient, <laughs> even though we give you a lot of opportunities for not being so patient. Uh, we really greatly appreciate it. Uh, one more good semester is how I see it. Uh, let's say five years down the road, that's how you're going to see it. <laughs> it may not look that way right now. You just need some time. Uh, have a wonderful rest of the semester. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. <laughs>